Hey guys, this video is going to be a review and reflection on the gear that I used on my CDT through hike this year. And pretty much what I'm going to do is just watch the video I made on my gear before the trail and just do commentary on it. So we'll start with the larger items. This is my quilt. It is the Enlightened Equipment 20 degree revelation. Alright, so the quilt is an old quilt that I've had since 2016. I had, you know, probably 200 nights on it before I started and it worked out fine. I would describe it as adequate. The coldest nights that I got on CDT were in the low 20s, maybe like 23, 22. And in order to stretch it that low down to its temperature rating, I had to sleep in my hooded puffy jacket and I also slept with a uh, water resistant bivy um, which helped uh, keep drafts out and uh, boosted the temperature rating a little bit. I would say that a 20 degree quilt is appropriate for the CDT for an average sleeper. This is my sleeping pad, it's the NeoAir X-Lite women's version. I use the women's because I don't need the length of the men's and this one has an R value of 3.9 instead of 3.2. Uh, yeah, those things are all held true. I really like that pad. It was definitely warm enough for the CDT. Um, in New Mexico, I did get a couple little desert pokies in it, and I think I popped it twice, but it was easily patched, and I had no problems for uh, the rest of the time. That is my tarp. It is the Yama Mountain Gear Seraform two-person tarp, and I will be using that with this bivy. This is the Bora Gear water resistant side zip bivy. Yeah, so um, this combination actually worked out really well uh, for much of New Mexico, especially southern New Mexico. I did cowboy camp most nights in the bivy and um, that was pretty enjoyable because a lot of the time I would leave it open so I could look at the stars, but then if there were like ants or something crawling around or I just wanted a little more protection, I could zip it up. I would like put my trekking pole behind the head uh, stuck down in the dirt and you know tie off to that or to a branch or something to keep the netting off my face uh, and that worked and then the tarp is excellent. Um, I do plan on doing an in-depth review on it um, in the near future um, but it's one of those rare items that ended up working exactly how I intended it to. Um, it's very very wind resistant as you can see in this uh, clip here. In pretty high winds compared to a couple of big Agnes tents it's remaining super solid while the other tents are flapping and I was in one windstorm that uh, collapsed a Z-Pax duplex but um, this stayed standing and um, obviously weather resistance was fine I didn't have any issues with leaking or anything and it's very spacious it ended up being overkill for New Mexico it really wasn't necessary for the kind of conditions I experienced in New Mexico um, but it was totally perfect for Colorado. I was initially a little bit worried about using it on the snow, pitching it on the snow, but that never ended up being a problem. Yeah, I did not use this shelter for the whole trail, as a couple of people have asked about. I uh, halfway through switched to my old Z-Pex Solplex uh, because I knew I would want more bug protection, uh, especially in the Wind River range, and uh, that ended up being a good call, and I also saved about half a pound, um, and the weather was generally much friendlier in the second half of the trail during the summer, so I didn't need the weather protection of this. This is my pack. It's the MLD Profit, and I'll be using it with a Nylofume pack liner. And I also have this shoulder pocket that I'll be using to carry my bear spray in grizzly country. The pack worked out pretty well. Um, the shoulder straps are super comfortable. I was definitely maxing out the carrying comfort in Colorado when I had like a 12 to 13 pound base weight and would have to carry up to six days of food. But this was just barely uh, comfortable enough and big enough to handle Colorado, but then it was just light enough uh, that I didn't mind using it for the rest of the trail. So it was a fair compromise and it worked out all right. My only two complaints are that the hip belt uh, ended up actually being a little too big after I lost some weight and so I couldn't tighten it as much as I would have liked. And also the side pockets are just too high. Like it, it was, I mean I could still reach the bottles but it was a little bit annoying. Now moving on to the stuff that I'll be wearing. This is my hiking shirt. It's the Outdoor Research Echo long sleeve shirt. Awesome shirt, very breathable. Five inch inseam running shorts and polyester underwear. Thin nylon dress socks. Those are just my uh, hiking 
socks of choice. These are my shoes, the Ultra Temp 1.5. Um, I actually ended up using four different pairs of Ultra shoes on this hike, kind of just to try them out. Um, I used the Temp 1.5, the Lone Peak 4, and the Superior 4. And I also used a pair of uh, Superior 3s that I had laying around. Um, and they all were pretty good. I mean, I like Ultra shoes. Um, it sort of just depends on what you want. The Temps are obviously the most protective, but they feel kind of clunky. Uh, the Superiors are the most light and nimble, but uh, my feet would get a little bit sore because they're less padded. And then the Lone Peaks are sort of like a nice middle ground, um, and the traction is the best. Uh, the Lone Peaks are what I used in Colorado, and uh, I like them. Yeah, so it just depends on what you want watch and my hat and sunglasses. The hat is the, hat the Outdoor is awesome. Research Sunrunner hat with the neck drape. It's uh, my favorite hiking hat that I've tried. Still really like it. Over here I have my fanny pack which I will use to carry my camera which I'm shooting on. It is the Sony A5100. Solid camera. And it will also hold my phone which is an iPhone SE, a mini tripod, a Nightcore tip rechargeable flashlight. Ended up being fine. It held its charge reasonably well, and I like not having to carry batteries. Headphones and chapstick. In the fanny pack will also be my pocket knife, which is a Victor Knox classic. Now moving on to the clothing that I'll be carrying. This is my insulated jacket, the Enlightened Equipment Torrid Apex jacket with the hood. I really like that jacket and I do plan on doing a dedicated review of it. I would say it's warm enough for that, you know, 30 to 50 degree nighttime temperature range. Um, anything below that, I would opt for a warmer jacket, which I did in Colorado. My rain jacket, the Frog Togs Ultralight rain jacket. <laughs> um, I don't know if Frog Togs was a great choice for the CDT. I mean, most of the time it Woo! ended up being okay, but there were like maybe three times that I can think of where it wetted all the way through and I was soaked down to either my base layer or my skin. Uh, once in New Mexico, once in Colorado, and once in Idaho, I think. And I had to actually stop and pitch my tent earlier than I would have liked um, to avoid potentially becoming hypothermic. And, you know, that would have been the case with any ultralight rain jacket. I'm not going to blame it on frog togs. And I don't nec it, it depends on the individual whether you would pack a more substantial rain jacket for the CDT. I could see doing that, but I also got by with frog togs. So, um, it's up to you and your personal level of sort of discomfort and risk tolerance there. Um, if I were going to use a different rain jacket, I would probably opt for something in maybe the 8 ounce range with like probably a nice 3 layer fabric or maybe something with shake dry. Montbell Tachyon wind shirt. I do like the wind shirt after using it for a whole through hike now. I feel like it adds a lot of versatility to the layering system and it weighs less than 2 ounces so that's going to stay in my kit. Montbell Versalite rain pants. Uh, the Versalite rain pants performed about as well as uh, Frog Togs fabric-wise, um, and I would definitely use them again because um, the water protection on your legs is less important than your core. Lightheart Gear rain mittens. They are sil nylon, and I seam sealed them. All right, these I would not use again. So the outside is uh, sil, and then the inside is polyurethane coated, and the uh, PU coating. Uh, wore off somewhere along the line, maybe halfway, three quarters of the way through, and at that point they were not waterproof at all. Fleece liner gloves and a fleece neck gaiter, which I can use um, also as a headband or an ear warmer. Um, primarily I'll be using it at night when I'm sleeping to pull it over my eyes and nose uh, if it gets cold. And then I'll also have a head net, which I probably won't need until at least northern Colorado, and then... When did I get the head net? I think I got the head net for the winds, and I definitely <laughs> needed it there. The mosquitoes were terrible, and I held on to it for quite a bit longer after that. A second pair of the same nylon dress socks. Now yep. moving on to my food and water setup. This is just an odor-proof sack that I will use as my food storage until I get to grizzly country, and then I'll be using an ursac. 
Yeah, so I am not going to use OP sacks anymore. Uh, honestly, they suck. They are fine when they're brand new, but they, for me, they last like two weeks at the most before the seal is broken. Um, so what I started doing was just using a Nylofume bag and tying it off. And um, when I wasn't in grizzly country, I would just sleep with that. And when I was, I would put it in my ur sack and hang it. I mean, the, the OP sacks are like $15, $17 for two, and they don't last. So they're just expensive Ziploc bags. So I'm gonna use Nylofume from now on, which are lighter and cheaper. And so I won't feel as bad about having to replace them when I get a tear. This is just a cold soaking jar. It's a Gatorade powder container and a little spoon. Perfect size. Now for my water, I will have That's two ramens. Two smart water bottles, one of them with a Sawyer squeeze on it, and one of them with the sport cap, which I can use to back flush this if needed. That really doesn't work as well as people say. Um, it kind of works in a pinch, but definitely not as well as the syringe. And then I will have two two liter ever new water bags. Uh, I'm not so much a fan of these anymore, and I don't really think I'll use them going forward just because they're much more likely to get a puncture, which did happen to me once and I had to tape it, and that was just annoying and I lost water. And also, they're much harder to fill, and uh, overall, I, I just find them annoying, so I'm just probably going to use only smart water bottles going forward. Here I have my navigation materials. I have the Jonathan Lay maps printed on 11 by 17 paper. And then I have, and that'll be in a gallon Ziploc bag. Then I have my compass, which is the Sunto M3 Global. I was really into using my compass at first, just because I was practicing navigation, but ultimately I ended up mostly using gut hooks like everybody else. But I, I did still carry the paper maps the whole time, just in case. Um, and I used them a lot, actually, in Colorado when I was navigating more by uh, terrain. And down here I have my two ditty bags. Alright, so I don't want to get too much into the ditty bag stuff because it's really not that interesting. I mean, you'll have the basic stuff like, you know, a uh, little thing of Dr. Bronner's hand sanitizer, toothbrush, that kind of stuff. Um, if you want to know what's in there, you can look at the gear list. Um, I guess one thing of interest here is uh, I sort of like dialed in what I like to use for a repair kit. Uh, basically what I uh, ended up deciding I like is to have three different kinds of tape. I'll use uh, duct tape. Uh, DCF tape and tenacious tape. I'll use the duct tape for just like basic repairs of stuff that's like kind of disposable like frog togs or my trash compactor bag and then I would use the DCF tape for like patching the inside of uh, rain gear or just like the inside of any kind of like shell fabric and then I would use the tenacious tape on the outside of clothing just because I feel like it's like maybe a little bit tougher and more likely to stick to the outside of like nylon fabrics than the DCF tape, but the DCF tape would probably work fine too, and it's lighter. And then I would have uh, my needle and my floss, which I would occasionally use for repairs, generally for like rain pants. So I'm just gonna skip ahead a little bit. The electronics are pretty standard. I had a 10,000 milliamp hour power bank, two USB cords. Um, I actually ended up using three USB cords, two regular, one lightning, um, a two port wall charger, uh, Garmin inReach, uh, actually it's a DeLorme inReach. The inReach actually was pretty nice to have for the CDT. Um, some people will choose not to have it, but I liked having it for being able to keep in touch with people and just in case something got sketchy in Colorado. So moving forward. All right, so here's gonna be the Colorado gear. Uh, first, the clothing. I'll be sending myself a warmer insulated jacket that I will swap for the Torrid. This is the Montbell Mirage Parka. That ended up being a good call. There were a couple times where I was really happy to have it. Um, like after we got a couple of storms and I had to pitch my shelter, I would just sort of put it on, you know, hiding under my tarp and, you know, I'm not generating any body heat and this was excellent for that. Um, I would, I, the torrid would have been fine, but this gave me a lot like bigger margin for safety and comfort. Um, so I would definitely bring that again. The only thing that could be better is if it was synthetic, so it was more water resistant, uh, but it ended up working out pretty well. I'll be swapping out my base layer for a mid-weight polyester base layer. Did not end up doing that. The thin base layer was fine for Colorado because it ended up being like 60-ish degrees during the day normally. And I will also have mid-layers. This is just a 100-weight fleece by White Sierra. 
definitely ended up being awesome uh, when we had storms or when it was just cold. Um, I definitely would use that again, at least for early June. I think I got rid of it like mid to late June. Uh, no, I got rid of it late June. Um, yeah, and it was really nice to have when we had like one snowstorm or like a rainstorm. Uh, it's just a really simple 100 weight fleece, but I like it and it's cheap. I might do a review on it. And these are just some fleece tights. Uh, they're the Rab Flux Pants. Again, that was another item that was nice to have in early June uh, when it's generally going to be a bit colder and snowstorms are more likely, but I also ditched those in late June. And I will also have a fleece headband and Didn't end up using that. some warm wool socks for hiking in the snow. Those were absolutely critical or my feet would have frozen. Um, I would wear those uh, basically all day when I was going to be hiking in the snow all day. Um, and just post holing endlessly. Um, and you know, they would be soaked all the way through and my feet would be wet, but at least I, since I had a thicker sock, uh, my feet would stay kind of warm. Uh, some of the people I hiked with had uh, seal skins, waterproof socks, and they seemed to be really happy with them. And in the future I might try those, but uh, this is an option that works. And just a fuzzy generic pair of socks that I will reserve only for sleeping. Yep. Gotta have the sacred socks. I will also have a second sleeping pad, a Gossamer Gear Thin Light 8th inch foam pad. Um, that'll just add a teensy bit of warmth and it'll also help prevent punctures and serve as a backup pad. Yeah, um, that was an item that was nice to have and again, like an, a late May, early June thing. I don't remember exactly when I got rid of that, but around the same time as the mid layers. And there is a Polycro ground sheet that um, is just for keeping things drier when camping on snow. I only ended up camping on snow two or three times, and when I did, I was very happy to have the Polypro for keeping things drier. Then there's a Camp Corsa ice axe. I did use the ice axe. I never had to self-arrest, but there were a couple of sketchy traverses where I had it in my uphill hand, and I definitely would have not wanted to not have it. <laughs> And uh, there were two times where I had to down climb a very steep slope, uh, facing the slope with my uh, ice axe in my hand and, you know, going down it like a ladder and uh, the ice axe was critical for that. Uh, so yeah, when you have a super high snow year in the San Juans and in Colorado, you are going to need an ice axe for sure. But obviously in a low snow year, you could probably get by without one. And Catula K10 hiking crampons. Uh, those were kind of a mix for me. The traction was excellent and they made me feel a lot more secure on steep slopes. Uh, but at the same time, they really are not a good fit uh, for using with ultras and the strap over the top of them would rub right over my big toe and I ended up getting some, I don't know what, maybe tendonitis on my uh, the tendons in my big toe, both of them. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I had pretty bad big toe pain for most of the second half of Colorado and then it took like a couple weeks to go away after I stopped using these. So I don't know if these are the best solution because I don't think they're great for using with trail runners but they had awesome traction so I don't know I'll be looking at different options uh, in the future but at least the traction was good. There is a fire starting kit. There's just some cotton balls, Vaseline, and matches although I'll probably end up using a lighter instead. Actually, never ended up having a fire. And down here, just some little things. Uh, those are baskets for my trekking poles, which I don't normally use. And uh, I did not use the little baskets, and they would have not been very much help at all. Uh, at the last minute, I decided to send myself uh, large diameter snow baskets instead, and that was definitely the right call. Uh, definitely helped when post holing and just trudging through snow, which was a lot of the time the strap to attach my quilt to my sleeping pad more securely. Some of these choices are a little conservative, I think, particularly the hiking crampons and the jacket. I don't think that either of those choices were on the conservative side. I also have a pair of snowshoes, but right now I'm not planning to send these to myself uh, because they're really heavy. So yeah, this is still debatable um, whether you need or do not need snowshoes in the San Juans after a high snow year if you're doing the CDT. Um, May did get a lot of snow and the snow was kind of soft and there was a ton of post holing but I still didn't send myself snowshoes because I didn't want to carry them. Uh, uh, it was about 50-50 uh, 
uh, the hikers I saw out there who did or did not have snowshoes. And everybody was miserable. Um, some people were still post holing even with snowshoes, uh, but then they still had to lug them around. But then sometimes maybe they were happier than the people without them, because sometimes the snowshoes helped. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, it's, it's still not clear whether it would have been uh, super helpful or not. I, I kind of am leaning to there were not enough instances where it would have been super helpful that I would be willing enough to carry them. I don't know, everyone's going to be different there. It's uh, sort of like a judgment call, like if you don't mind the weight, they are going to help you sometimes, um, but they are going to be really annoying to carry. And right here I have the stuff that I'll only be using for Grizzly Country. Yeah, so Ursac and Bear Spray, pretty standard. I had the extra large size Ursac and then the uh, small sized Bear Spray. Yeah, I would carry both of those things again because you don't want to mess around with Grizzly Bears. Alright, so that's it. If you have any questions about this stuff, if I didn't go into enough detail on anything, uh, just drop me a comment down below and I will uh, definitely get back to you. Um, I think that's it. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.